out beyond the asteroid belt lie the behemoths of our solar system, the gas giants. And NASA has sent a series of spacecraft over the years that have revealed some surprising secrets of the outer solar system. The next wave of discovery and beyond Mars was the outer planets. Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11 were you know, the first two spacecraft to actually cross the asteroid belt. Our first Fourier into, into the outer planets. We were able to go and see these gas giant worlds for the first time by actually being there. What the mission did was not solve all the questions. What it did was it raised the right ones to ask next. Voyager just, just blazed a trail of you know, new knowledge throughout the entire solar system. The grand tour of the solar system, right? These, these planets only align, I think, every 176 years. So there was that one shot in 1977 to do it. When Voyager observed Io, the moon of Jupiter. Was it a rotten orange or a pizza pie? And one of the graduate students noticed this uh, protrusion at the edge of Io and said, look at that. He said, volcanoes. Hmm, not seen anything like this. Oh, gee, except on Earth when volcanoes erupt. Io is the most volcanically active body in the entire solar system. One of those, oh my God, moments. We have something new. Rather unexpected, indeed. It was this long odyssey from one world to another over decades. We had close-ups of all of the Jupiter's large satellites. Voyager did that. It, of course, went to Saturn. It saw the myriad of moons. And then, of course, you know, Voyager 2 went on to, to Uranus and Neptune, and 99.9% .9 of everything the human race knows about Uranus and Neptune uh, was learned as a result of those two Voyager 2 flybys. And then it's just kept going and going and going. Remember, these spacecraft are still working right now. They were launched in August and September of 1977. And going and going. It's still sending back data from the very edge of what we would call the solar system. And going and going. To imagine that this little tiny spacecraft is just trudging along and then reaching the outer limits of our solar system. Those missions begat the next phase of exploration of the outer solar system with, of course, Galileo and Jupiter. We now knew we needed to get back to Jupiter and get into orbit. Galileo had a problem with unfurling its giant you know, 12 foot antenna. All of a sudden, instead of uh, 100,000 bits per second, we could only transmit uh, 10 or 20 bits per second. We figured out a workaround to still capture the critical data, even at a data rate that today would frustrate the kids of the world. And nevertheless, we learned a lot of things by virtue of the fact that we were in orbit around the planet. We stayed there for a long time. So that was a terrific mission. One of the missions that sticks out is actually a recent mission, the Cassini-Huygens mission. Cassini is like the World Series of planetary exploration. Cassini gave us our first sort of close-up real images of the planet Saturn. You must think of Saturn and its satellites as a planetary system. You get this unprecedented look at Saturn's moon Titan. And then it drops off this probe called Huygens that actually lands on Titan and sends back images from the surface with these little icy cobbles. I mean, Titan is another world with, with meteorology on it and it's raining methane in the southern hemisphere right now. And we see lakes of liquid hydrocarbon on the surface of Titan. Nature seems to be far more imaginative than, uh, than we are. The real sleeper on the Cassini mission is Enceladus. During the flyby, we found this plume of ices emanating from the, the, the South Pole. These incredible geysers that are erupting ices and, and water and ammonia. But more importantly, the mass spectrometer on the mission found simple organic compounds, hydrocarbons. One of the things that you need for life is water and you need organics. And uh, it's interesting because the, the, these plumes that are coming from the South Pole of Enceladus seem to have a little bit of both. Many people ask NASA, well, what do you think? Is Pluto a planet or not? Whether it's a planet or not, and whether, you know, whether we grew up with Pluto being a planet. Our opinion is we don't care. It's an object worthy of study. This is really kind of the last outpost um, in our solar system. And New Horizons is going to fly by Pluto and all the other moons in July 2015. Being able to finally resolve the surface of Pluto and its number of moons, its growing number of moons, that's certainly going to be really cool. And that's really incredibly fascinating that, that even today, 
we're finding new things about our solar system. It really is sort of the final, final voyage of discovery of looking at this first piece of what is really out there in the depths of the dark.